President Trump, the first question is for you. The country is heading into a dangerous new phase. More than 40,000 Americans are in the hospital tonight with COVID, including record numbers here in Tennessee. And since the two of you last shared a stage, 16,000 Americans have died from COVID. So please be specific. How would you lead the country during this next stage of the coronavirus crisis? Two minutes uninterrupted. So as you know, 2.2 million people modeled out were expected to die. We closed up the greatest economy in the world in order to fight this horrible disease that came from China. It's a worldwide pandemic. It's all over the world. You see the spikes in Europe and many other places right now. Uh, if you notice, the mortality rate is down 85 uh, percent. The excess mortality rate is way down and much lower than almost any other country. And we're fighting it, and we're fighting it hard. There is a spike. There was a spike in Florida, and it's now gone. There was a very big spike in Texas. It's now gone. There was a very big spike in Arizona. It's now gone. And there are some spikes and surges in other places. First of all, nothing's gone. And just yesterday, we had the highest number of coronavirus cases yet. And second of all, we don't know the death rate yet because we haven't seen long-term effects of, coronavirus, of the coronavirus. And third of all, your predictions were actually way lower initially. Initially, your, your predictions on, on the, on the uh, amount of deaths in the United States were, well, I think, I'm pretty sure it was closer to a million. So you're like, well, we, we thought it was 2.2 million. Yeah, no, yeah, what? no, it wasn't. And since I'm already talking, Joe Biden has a plan. His plan is to listen to scientists and do what they say. And trust me, I'm Joe Biden. I have a plan because I listen to scientists. Donald Trump doesn't listen to scientists. He doesn't say his plan, because, but his plan is, is his plan. And he's going to, you know, give people money and stuff like that. We're going to keep everything open. Everything's going to be fine. He's going to beat it. But the reality is that the cold weather's coming right now. We don't know about how contagious the coronavirus is in cold weather conditions yet because we haven't lived through a winter yet. And so everyone's acting like everything's fine. We shouldn't act like it's fine. We need to get serious about it. And that's why I have a plan. I'm the person with a plan. My plan is to enlist the Christians to help us because that's their job as Christians is to help others. And I want them to turn their churches into quarantine centers. And you know what? Texas had an outbreak. Well, if Texas had an outbreak, that's a great place to get coronavirus if, if all the churches accepted sick people. So what I'm saying is let's do a constitutional amendment. Temporar temporarily, we'll take away the freedom of assembly for like a year at a time. They have to redo the constitutional amendment after a year. And we'll take away the free, the, the, that means we're taking away the freedom of religion temporarily. But it, what it's, what it's also doing is it's basically saying, um, we're going to take over the churches, but actually you're going to stay in charge of your own church. And we're going to give you funding to keep your church open and to keep your people working. Cause you have staff at your church, your staff can be servants. Your staff can help people that are affected by the coronavirus. Because if we want to beat the coronavirus, this is my plan. If we want to beat the coronavirus, then we all need to make sure everyone has a way to get help. They will soon be gone. We have a vaccine that's coming. It's ready. It's going to be announced within weeks, and it's going to be delivered. We have uh, Operation Warp Speed, which is the military is going to distribute the vaccine. When you say you have a vaccine ready, you have an untested vaccine ready, and we all need to be honest about it, but it doesn't mean that we're not going to find a vaccine by testing it, but all I'm saying is you're, you're saying you won before you won, and if we're declaring war on the coronavirus, then we should act like the coronavirus is stronger than we know it is, because um, that's what you do when you're at war with an enemy. You act like your enemy is stronger than you think they are so that you don't let your enemy beat you. We delivered. We have... Uh, Operation Warp Speed, which is the military is going to distribute the vaccine. I can tell you from personal experience that uh, I was in the hospital. I had it and I got better. And I will tell you that uh, I had something that they gave me a therapeutic. I guess they would call it. Some people could say it was a cure, but uh, I was in for a short period of time and I got better very fast or I wouldn't be here tonight. And now they say I'm immune, whether it's four months or a lifetime, nobody's been able to say that, but I'm immune. Uh, more and more people are uh, getting better. We have uh, a problem that's a worldwide problem. This is a worldwide problem. But I've been congratulated by the heads of many countries on what we've been able to do. Uh, with the, if you, if you take a look at what we've done in terms of goggles, 
and masks and gowns and everything else, and in particular ventilators. We're now making ventilators all over the world, thousands and thousands a month, distributing them all over the world. It will go away, and as I say, we're rounding the turn, we're rounding the corner. It's going away. Okay, former Vice President Biden, to you, how would you lead the country out of this crisis? You have two minutes uninterrupted. 220,000 Americans dead. If you hear nothing else I say tonight, hear this. Anyone who's responsible for not taking control, in fact, not saying I'm, I take no responsibility initially, anyone who's responsible for that many deaths should not remain as President of the United States of America. We're in a situation where there are a thousand deaths a day now, a thousand deaths a day, and there are over 70,000 new cases per day. Compared to what's going on in Europe, as the New England Medical Journal said, they're starting from a very low rate. We're starting from a very high rate. The expectation is we'll have another 200,000 Americans dead by time between now and the end of the year. If we just wore these masks, the President's own advisors have told him, we could save 100,000 lives. And we're in a circumstance where the President thus far and still has no plan, no comprehensive plan. What I would do is make sure we have everyone encouraged to wear a mask all the time. I would make sure we move in the direction of rapid testing, investing in rapid testing. I would make sure that we set up national standards as to how to open up schools and open up businesses so they can be safe and give them the wherewithal, the financial resources to be able to do that. We're in a situation now where the New England Medical Journal, one of the serious, most serious journals in the, in the whole world, said for the first time ever that this, the way this president has responded to this crisis has been absolutely tragic. And so, folks, I will take care of this. I will end this. I will make sure we have a plan. President Trump, I'd like to follow up with you and your comments. I want to say something about what Joe just said. So he wants to open up schools. I've said I don't want to. I do think it's okay to open up schools if you're in like a rural community, you haven't had coronavirus cases. Yeah, you can have your own rules, but um, if you're in a big city or if you're in a lot of places, it'd be, to me, I think that um, we shouldn't turn our children into super spreaders because schools connect corporations, which just like churches connect corporate, I want to take away the freedom of assembly because churches connect all these corporations. Like say that I have people that work with me and we all are around each other. We know that we're exposed to each other. We know where we eat. We have a very limited circle. That's fine. But, um, schools make that circle huge and so do churches. And that's why I am so against keeping them open. But I realize the American people are never going to be okay with that unless we give them a way to do it. And that's why I think people need to be working from home and it's possible. And we need to stop being so concerned with making the numbers look good. Um, when we should be concerned with, um, beating the coronavirus to the point that it's not scary while we're all waiting for a vaccine because everyone's acting like it's not scary. It is scary. We need to be scared. I'm sick of people not being scared. So let's work together and let's stop it instead of just being like, okay, this is the new normal because we've all accepted this is the norm. If we all quarantine temporarily, we will be able to stop it and this won't be the norm anymore. Up with you and your comments, you talked about taking a therapeutic. I assume you're referencing Regeneron. You also said a vaccine will be coming within weeks. Yes. Is that a guarantee? Is, no, it's is not a guarantee, but it will be by the end of the year. But I think it has a good chance. There are two companies, I think, within a matter of weeks, and it will be distributed very quickly. Can you tell us which companies? Uh, Johnson & Johnson is doing very well. Moderna is doing very well. Pfizer is doing very well. And we have numerous others. And then we also have others that we're working on very closely with other countries, in particular Europe. Let me follow up with you, and because this is new information, you have said a vaccine is coming soon within weeks now. Your own officials say it could take well into 2021 at the earliest for enough Americans to get vaccinated. And even then, they say the country will be wearing masks and distancing into 2022. Is your timeline realistic? No, I think my timeline is going to be more accurate. I don't know that they're counting on the military the way I do, but we have our generals lined up, one in particular that's the head of logistics. 
And this is a very easy distribution for him. He's ready to go as soon as we have the vaccine. You can say what you want about Donald Trump, but putting a military logistics guy in charge of logistics is the smartest thing you could ever do in that situation. So let's all say, accept that Donald Trump actually does have a plan. And my plan is probably going to basically follow a lot of his plan. But my plan also involves people not being so obsessed with God help me and instead being obsessed with how can I help God? Like God, use me, turn me into a servant. Let me help someone whose family member is sick. We're going to take them into our church and make them feel safe because we can't send them to a homeless shelter. We don't want them to sleep in their car. We want them to feel safe and everyone wants to feel freaking safe. And that's what I'm saying. Dude, some people make people feel unsafe. I don't think people understand that Donald Trump scares a lot of people because he is a, 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 a national security threat. He's an intelligence threat. Him finding out things is scary. And Joe Biden, he should scare a lot of people because he's too old to think on his feet. He doesn't have any new ideas. Me, I understand you guys are scared of me, but what you need to think of me as is someone that has grown up in the United States, that wants the United States to do well, that wants the United States to be okay, despite the fact that the United States lets me down all the time. All I want is my country to care about their fuel consumption. All I want is for them to care about their energy consumption. All I want is for them to freaking care about turning off their freaking light. All I want is them to not go out to the restaurant to eat right now. Why can't you pick it up? And th that's all I want, but they, they aren't that way. And I still love my country. And I think that we all do, even Donald Trump does, but I still think Donald Trump's a very serious national security threat. Vice President Biden, your reaction and just 40% of Americans say they would definitely agree to take a coronavirus vaccine if it was approved by the government. What steps would you take to give Americans confidence in a vaccine if it were approved? Make sure it's totally transparent. Have the scientists of the world see it, know it, look at it, go through all the processes. And by the way, He's, this is the same fellow who told you this is going to end by Easter last time. This is the same fellow who told you that, don't worry, we're going to end this by the summer. We're about to go into a dark winter, a dark winter. And he has no clear plan, and there's no prospect that there's going to be a vaccine available for the majority of the American people before the middle of next year. President Trump, your reaction, he says you I have no plan. I don't think we're going to have a dark winter and, at all. We're opening up our country. We've learned and studied and understand the disease, which we didn't at the beginning. When I closed and banned China from coming in heavily infected and then ultimately Europe, but China was in January. Months later, he was saying I was xenophobic. I did it too soon. Now he's saying, oh, I should have, uh, I should have you know, moved quicker. But he didn't move quicker. He was months behind me, many months behind me. And frankly, he ran the H1N1 swine flu, and it was a total disaster, far less lethal, but it was a total disaster. Had that had this kind of numbers, 700,000 people would be dead right now. But it was a far less lethal disease. Uh, look, his own person who ran that for him, who, as you know, was his uh, chief of staff, said, it was catastrophic. It was horrible. We didn't know what we were doing. Now he comes up and he tells us how to do this. Also, everything that he said about the way every single move that he said we should make, that's what we've done. We've done all of it. But he was way behind us. Vice President Biden, your response? My response is he is xenophobic, but not because he shut down access from China. And he did it late after 40 countries had already done that. In addition to that, what he did, he made sure that we had 44 people that were in there in China, trying to get to Wuhan to determine what exactly the source of it was. What did the president say in January? He said, no, he said, this is, he's being transparent. The president of China is being transparent. We owe him a debt of gratitude. We, ought to, we have to thank him. And, and then what happened was, we started talking about using the Defense Act to make sure we go out and get whatever is needed out there to protect people. And again, I go back to this. He had nothing, he did virtually nothing. And then he gets out of the hospital and he talks about, we're, this is, oh, don't worry, it's all gonna be over soon. Come on, 
There's not another serious scientist in the world who thinks it's going to be over soon. President Trump, your reaction? I say over soon. I say we're learning to live with it. We have no choice. We can't lock ourselves up in a basement like Joe does. He has the <laughs> he has the ability to lock himself up. I don't know. He's obviously made a lot of money someplace, but he has this thing about living in a basement. People can't do that. By the way, I, as the president, couldn't do that. I'd love to put myself in the basement or in a beautiful room in the White House and go away for a year and a half until it disappears. I can't do that. And, Kirsten, every, t every meeting I had, every meeting I had, and I'd meet a lot of families, including Gold Star families and military families, every meeting I had, and I had to meet them. I had to. It would be horrible to have canceled everything. I said, you know, this is dangerous. And you catch it. And, you know, I caught it. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. Great doctors, great hospitals. And now I recovered. 99.9 of young people recover. 99% of people recover. We have to recover. We can't close up our nation. We have to open our school, and we can't close up our nation, or you're not going to have a nation. And of course, the CDC has said young people can get sick with COVID-19 and can pass it. Vice President Biden, I want to talk broadly about strategy, though. You can have I respond to that? 30 seconds, please, the and then seconds. I have a question. No, number one, he says that we're, uh, you know, we're learning to live with it. People are learning to die with it. You folks home will have an empty chair at the kitchen table this morning. That man or wife going to bed tonight and reaching over to try to touch their out of habit where their wife or husband was is gone. Learning to live with it. Come on. We're dying with it because he has never said, he said, you said it's dangerous. When's the last time? Is it really dangerous still? Are we dangerous? You tell the people it's dangerous now? What should they do about the danger? And you say, I take no responsibility. Let me talk about your two. Excuse me, I take, Very full, I take full responsibility. It's not my fault that it came here. It's China's fault. And you know what? It's not Joe's fault that it came here either. It's China's fault. They kept it from going into the rest of China for the most part, but they didn't keep it from coming out to the world, including Europe and ourselves. Vice President Biden. The fact is that when we knew it was coming, when it hit, what happened? What did the president say? He said, don't worry, it's going to go away. Be gone by Easter. Don't worry. The warm weather. Don't worry. Maybe inject bleach. He said he was kidding when he said that. But a lot of people thought it was serious. A whole range of things the president has said. Even today, he thinks we are in control. We're about to lose 200,000 more people. President Trump. Look, perhaps just to finish this, uh, I was kidding on that, but just to finish this, uh, when I closed, he said I shouldn't have closed. And that went on for months. What Nancy Pelosi said the same thing. She was dancing on the streets in Chinatown in San Francisco. I've said it before, the way you close was the problem. You didn't close the borders smoothly. You caused a panic. You caused people to rush back and you didn't put contact tracers together to monitor the people coming back from the United States because you didn't have enough people to do it, apparently. Apparently, there aren't, aren't enough people in the federal government. Your, your people that are in the federal government are following my friends around this small town in Colorado and threatening people with guns and threatening me with guns and handing me a loaded pistol in front of a small child and then shooting a cap gun at me to scare me because that guy, his job is following us around and harassing people. He gets paid. I mean, I, I mean, maybe he's not from the federal government. I don't know, but someone needs to find out. But, I, I mean, I, I have a feeling that Pretty soon, some of these people are going to, like, some of the stuff they've done is going to get traced back to certain people. But all I'm saying is, the way you closed the border, you did a bad job. And um, you're saying you did a great job, and you're blaming everything on China. But the reality is that, reality is that viruses happen. And um, the way that you've handled the situation is, has made the United States the laughing stock of the world. Everyone, every, every other country is looking at us going, these people are pathetic in their ability to fight the coronavirus because they're so freaking selfish. This makes perfect sense. The most selfish people are going to be the worst at beating the coronavirus because the United States is the worst at it. Like you said, China beat it. You keep blaming everything on China, even though they have a massive population, they had a way more difficult, difficult problem. A lot of people view China as a third world country. I don't. I think there are parts of China that are kind of third world country, but there are parts of the United States that feel like that sometimes. All right, so the situation right now where the United States is getting overwhelmed by the coronavirus, just to be clear, it's your fault. But the coronavirus situation in general isn't your fault. 
when I closed, he said, I shouldn't have closed. And that went on for months. What Nancy Pelosi said the same thing. She was dancing on the streets in Chinatown in San Francisco. But when I closed, he said, this is a terrible thing. You're xenophobic. I think he called me racist, even. And because I was closing it to China. Now he says I should have closed it earlier. It just, Joe, it doesn't work. I didn't say either of those things. You certainly did. You certainly did. did. I talked about a xenophobia in a different context. It wasn't about closing the border to Chinese coming to the United States. All right. I want to talk about both of your different strategies to handle. He thought I shouldn't have closed the border. Well, let's. That's obvious. Is that, do you want to respond to that quickly, Vice President Biden? Okay. Let's talk about your different strategies toward dealing with this. Mr. Vice President. Just to be clear, there are a lot of different scientists with a lot of different opinions. And um, that's why it's important to have a president that thinks like a scientist. And everyone can go, well, the scientists are going to tell me everything. And it's like, well, the scientists don't agree with each other. So at some point, you need to actually be able to have conversations with the scientists. And um, I I think you can find a scientist that's going to tell you whatever you want to hear. Depression, domestic and substance abuse outweighs the risk of exposure to the virus. What I would say is I'm going to shut down the virus, not the country. It's his ineptitude that caused the, vi- caused the country to have to shut down in large part. Why businesses have gone under, why schools are closed, why so many people have lost their living, and why they're concerned. Those other concerns are real. That's why he should have been, instead of in a sand trap in his golf course, he should have been negotiating with Nancy Pelosi and the rest of the Democrats and Republicans about what to do about the acts they were passing for billions of... If I get elected president, just to be clear about this, I will golf more than I've ever golfed in my entire life. Why will I do that? Because a huge percentage of business deals happen on the golf course. It's four hours long, but it can be two hours long if you don't have enough time. And two hours is is the perfect amount of time to spend with someone. And you're in a, you're in the perfect size group. You're in a four to five, a group of four to five people, maybe three. So you have a chance to have conversations. Your conversation's light. You get to see how a person reacts. It's it's, it's kind of interesting to see people uh, golf because you never know how good they are. And um, it's better than being in an office. No, all negotiations must take place at a table. Uh, In my America, negotiations can take place wherever it encourages a positive result. And for a lot of people, golfing encourages a positive result because they have a great time together. They get to get outside. They get to breathe. And they get to talk. And it's not all about hard talk. A lot of it's about, like, Nice putt, nice shot. Passing for billions of dollars to make sure people had the capacity. But you haven't ruled out more shutdowns. Well, no, I'm not shutting down the name, but there are, look, you need standards. The standard is if you have a reproduction rate in a community that's above a certain level, everybody says, slow up, more social distancing, do not open bars and do not open gymnasiums, do not open until you get this under control, under more control. But when you do open, give the people the capacity to be able to open and have the capacity to do it safely. For example, schools. Schools, they need a lot of money to open. They need to deal with ventilation systems. They need to deal with smaller classes, more teachers, more pods. And he's refused to support that money, or at least up to now. Let's talk about schools. President Trump, I I think we have to respond, if I might. Please, and then I have a follow-up. Thank you, and I appreciate that. Look, all he does is talk about shutdowns, but forget about him. His Democrat governors, Cuomo in New York, you look at what's going on in California, you look at Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Democrats, Democrats all, they're shut down so tight and they're dying. They're dying. And he supports all these people. All he talks about is shutdowns. No, we're not going to shut down and we have to open our schools. And it's like, as an example, I have a young son. He also tested positive. By the time I spoke to the doctor the second time, he was fine. It just went away. Young people, I guess it's their immune system. Let me follow up with you, President Trump. You've demanded schools open in person and insist they can do it safely. But just yesterday, Boston became the latest city to move its public school system entirely online after a coronavirus spike. What is your message to parents who worry that sending their children to school will endanger not only their kids, but also their teachers and families? I want to open the school. I have talked about creating a revolution in education because I don't know if you guys have watched my videos. I, have, I, I can do some pretty interesting stuff to keep your attention. And I think the secret to school is keeping the kids' attention. And I think the difficult problem that we have with 
distance learning or e-learning or having teachers teaching kids through the internet, like Boston moving their entire school online, is because is that um, you can't keep the kids engaged. And so I've talked about creating a revolution in, in online education. Um, for me, that means bringing in like serious um, cinematographers and and because Hollywood, uh, yes, they have hundreds of people that work on one movie, but you could have those hundreds of people doing smaller scale type things like I do from home. I mean, I don't know if you, you, you've you seen my work, but I can really keep people's attention um, because I am creative about it. And so we can help these teachers be more creative and we can put together the best curriculum of all time and we can use the situation where we have a bunch of lemons, where the lemons are coronavirus, and we can make lemonade by creating the best online education system of all time. And so someday homeschoolers will benefit from the system even after um, kids go back to school and kids that go back to school can benefit from the system because uh, they can use it as supplemental learning. Because a lot of these kids, they don't get much help at home. Their parents don't have much of an education. Maybe their parent doesn't even speak English. They have no one that's going to help them when they get home. But if we can create curriculum that teaches them all sorts of things through the internet, then that's going to help people in the long term. And it's not just going to help the United States, it's going to help the entire world. And that's why I talked about uh, a, a, a creating opportunities for breakthroughs in online education. Families. I want to open the schools. Uh, the transmittal rate to the teachers is uh, very small. But I want to open the schools. We have to open our country. We're not going to have a country. You can't do this. We can't keep this country closed. This is a massive country with a massive economy. People are losing their jobs. They're committing suicide. There's depression, alcohol, drugs at a level that nobody's ever seen before. There's abuse, tremendous abuse. We have to open our country. You know, I've said it often. The cure cannot be worse than the problem itself. I and that's it. what's happening. And he wants to close down. He'll close down the country. That's why I've talked about supporting people so much. That's why I've talked about bringing in the churches to help us. That's why I've talked about addressing the coronavirus as a World War II type problem where we all come together and give people support. Because if your kid is sick because the schools are all open, then what are you gonna do? Oh, uh, I'm gonna kick my kid out. No, you can't kick your kid out. You gotta get coronavirus. That's just how it works. So we need to figure out how to make sure that everyone's not spreading it to everyone because this whole herd immunity thing is not going to work.